Hey everyone, my name is Orion and I'm the designer of the NHL full uniform template. Today I'm going to do a video demo on how to use the template as well as a few tips and tricks that I use when I'm designing concepts. So we're going to start by doing the Seattle Kraken uniform. I'm going to open Illustrator and this is the view you're going to be greeted to when you open the template. I'm going to recommend having your layers panel open. It's going to help you with the navigation of the template, um, going within groups, turning layers on and off and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna start by doing the front of the jersey and we're gonna work our way from the top towards the bottom. So we'll start with the collar. If I double click the jersey, we're gonna enter isolation mode. If I click the collar, you can see that we have the group layer selected. And if I double click the collar, we're gonna enter isolation mode of the collar. And here's where we make our changes. I'm just gonna zoom in here. And if I select each element of the collar, you'll see that collar colors number one to four are selected. And if I go to the swatches panel, each folder actually contains an NHL franchise color palette and they're all preloaded here. So I'm just going to navigate down to the Seattle Kraken and we're going to change the color to Navy and the inside collar we're going to change to red. Next, we're going to do the collar text effect. So if I just double click this, you can change this text to anything you want. You can change the color, the font, the scale, all that. If I write Seattle Kraken, um, that's usually good enough for me, but for this video demo, I'm gonna take it a step further and just hide this layer. I'm gonna go into this file where I have the Kraken logos preloaded. I'm gonna copy the wordmark logo and then paste it into this file, scale it down and then place it on the collar. And then I'm just gonna add a quick warp effect to it. So I'm going to arc it at negative 10 actually works perfectly. So that's, that's easy. And then I'm just going to scale it up and that looks pretty good. Uh, we can show or hide various Adidas logos here. So we have the prime green logo. You can hide that and choose the arrow ready or the climate tags, both of which you can customize and have it say whatever you want. Uh, you can change the font, the color, same as the color text effect. So it's a fun little accessory to use. Uh, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to leave the prime green logo. It's what Adidas is currently using, so we'll stick with that. Uh, before we're done with the collar, I'm just going to navigate back to the jersey. Um, if I click this alternate lace collar and the drop down menu, you can see that we have three hidden layers. If I click them, we have the traditional lace up collar, the horizontal laces, as well as the cross laces. And uh, those just provide some extra settings to play with. I know Seattle has the default collar like this one here, but for the sake of the video and just to show off customization, I'm gonna throw on some lace up collar options. I'm a big fan of the traditional laces. I like the vintage and retro feel it gives. So uh, I'm gonna use that today. I'm gonna double click that, enter isolation mode, and we'll make our changes here. So if I, Hold shift and click both of these. We'll change these to navy blue. And that'll change the laces to turquoise. And that's gonna look pretty good. Next up, we'll do the shoulders. So if I double click the shoulders, we get into isolation mode. And if I do the drop down menu here, we have various shoulder options. So right now we have the squared shoulders. Here are the rounded shoulders, as well as pointed shoulders. And within each shoulder layer, we have sub layers. So if I double click that, you can see that we can turn uh, the Adidas dimpled texture on and off, as well as a yoke stripe. So I have that here and we can change that to any color we'd like. Um, just for this, I'm gonna keep it with the squared shoulders. So I'm just gonna hide the pointed shoulders and turn these ones back on. I'm gonna double click them and change the color to navy blue and then back out and then I'm going to do the shoulder logos. So if I double click this NHL logo, we're entering a clipping mask. So this logo is fully visible only while it's in the clipping mask. But as soon as you drag it out, it becomes hidden. So I'm just going to delete both of those logos and then I'm going to grab the secondary anchor logo and paste it into this file. And now it's just a matter of scaling it down and rotating it just so it fits on the shoulders. And 
I'm just going to hold Option and drag it over. And then rotate it just so it matches this shoulder as well. I think right about there looks pretty good. Actually, we'll have to nudge it over a few more. And then I use these two dots and it looks like it's centered relatively well. So with that, I'm happy. Uh, something I do with shoulder logos and uh, just about actually any logo that I throw on a jersey, I throw on a drop shadow effect. I just find that it helps uh, elevate the concepts just just a bit and uh, they're, they're really subtle but it does add some dimension and uh, I think it improves the overall look. So uh, the settings I use are zero pixels for the X offset, one pixel for the Y offset and half a pixel for the blur and I find that works really well for the shoulder logos. So I'm just going to leave them at there. Again, it's really subtle, but it does make a difference, and uh, I think it helps elevate concepts. Next, I'm going to change the base color of the jersey. So if I just click the base black color, if we scroll down into our layers panel, you'll see that the jersey color layer is selected. So I'm just going to change that to navy. And then next, we're going to go into the sleeve. So if I double click any element within the sleeve, we enter a clipping mask. So again, it's the same thing. The elements are only visible within the mask. So Seattle has their first stripe here and it's a pretty thick turquoise stripe. So I'm gonna do maybe 50, 60, let's go 55 pixels. And then I'm just gonna click this anchor point here and use the arrow key just to push it along the side. Then I'm gonna change the color to the turquoise. Whoops, make sure your stroke is selected. And then I'm gonna push these elements down. Uh, this next stripe is slightly less thick, so maybe we'll do 35. I'm just going to use the arrow key to push it up just so it's hiding under the first stripe. And that color is their tertiary blue. Then they have the base jersey color, so that's going to be navy. And then this last stripe here is a really thin red stripe, so let's go down to, I think 7 pixels look pretty good and we'll change that to red. Zoom out, get a good look at it. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm preemptively gonna select all this and copy it, and uh, I'll tell you why in a second. Next, I'm just gonna change the jersey number from 13 to 32. Seattle's the 32nd franchise, so we'll just pair it off with that number. And then the fill color is gonna be turquoise, and the stroke is going to be the tertiary blue. So with that, the sleeve is done and it's looking really good. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this sleeve. Instead of doing each stripe individually like we did on the first one, I'm gonna highlight each one and just delete it. And then I'm gonna paste the striping pattern that I just copied. And I'm gonna reflect it on the vertical axis. And then I'm gonna drag it over and place it just like that. That way all the stripes are consistent, the colors are consistent, and the placement is gonna be in line with the one you just made. So it, it cuts your time in half, really. Next, I'm gonna change this number to 32. And then I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool. And as soon as the T shows up, I'm just gonna click it. And again, it's gonna select all the elements from this number and carry them over here. So it's the same colors, same stroke width, all that. Next, we're gonna do the front of the jersey. So again, we're gonna enter a clipping mask here. So if I double click the logo, we're in the front and here's where we make changes. I'm gonna delete the NHL logo, go back to this file and select my Kraken logo. I'm gonna paste it and then scale it down. And Seattle uses a really large primary logo. So I want that to be kind of the central focus. We'll make it about that big, looks pretty good. On the uniform, they have the thin red stripe at the top. So I'm just gonna use, again, the, the eyedropper tool and click it till I get the red stripe. And then I'm gonna delete these layers. And then I'm gonna make this bottom stroke really thick. I think we had it at 55 pixels. Oops. That's pretty good. 
And then I'm just going to use the arrow keys and push it just so it covers the bottom of the jersey. And then I'm going to drag this red stripe down so that the width in between these two stripes is the same as the width in between here. And I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to change that to the turquoise blue. And with that, we are done the front of the jersey. Uh, actually, something I'm going to do to the front logo before I forget is I'm going to apply a drop shadow on it as well. For this logo, it's much bigger, so we can actually get away with more of the effect. So I'll do two pixels for the Y offset and one pixel for the blur. And if we go back to the front, you can just see how subtle it is, but it looks raised off the front of the chest, and uh, I think it looks pretty sharp. So we're going to go over to the back of the jersey, and a lot of the elements that we're going to change are the same as what we just did on the front. So I'm going to double click, enter isolation mode, double click the collar, and then we select both of these and change the color to navy blue. And I'm going to go here, double click the shoulders, and again, the back has the same shoulder options as the front, where you have the rounded shoulders, the pointed shoulders, and uh, the squared off shoulders. I'm just going to change these to navy blue. And then I'm actually going to go back to the front of the jersey. And I'm just going to copy the two anchor logos. Just so they're the same distance apart. And then I'm going to go back to the back, delete those, paste in place, and then drag them over. I'm going to use the smart guide and line it up right into the middle. And then the arrow keys and push them up. And then I might have to scale them down just slightly. And then those look lined up pretty well, so I'm happy with that. Next, I'm just going to focus in on this Nape logo here. I have it as my personal logo for now, but if you open this drop down menu, you can hide that logo and then turn on the Adidas logo and then double click the Adidas logo a couple of times and change the color. And for this jersey, we're just gonna make it the turquoise. Next, I'm gonna do the base color of the jersey. I'm gonna make it navy. And then we'll do the sleeves. Um, I can't remember if I still have these stripes copied, so I'm just gonna navigate back to the front, copy these, and then double click and enter the clipping mask for the sleeve. I'm gonna delete those, paste these stripes, and then drag them over. That way, again, they're, they're consistent with what's on the front and uh, it cuts your time in half. I'm gonna push this logo down a bit and then change it to 32. Nudge it over. Using the eyedropper tool, we'll select that and that sleeve is done. We'll go over to the right sleeve, the eyedropper tool again, change the number to 32, and then I'm going to select all those stripes, delete them, paste the stripes in place, and then drag them over, and those look pretty good to me. So with that, we have both the sleeve stripes done and then I'm going to do the back. So I'm going to double click this and this font by default is Jersey M54. The f all the fonts that I've used are included in the template. You'll just have to install them yourself. But uh, if you don't like this font, you can change it to just about anything. Um, I use this one because it's a generic block letter font. It looks good and uh, it works pretty well with pretty much any temp or any design you want to do. So I'm going to keep it like that. And I'm just going to change the text to say Kraken, and we'll change the color to turquoise. And then I'll do the same thing with the number, and we'll change it to 32. Something I'm just noticing here is that the spacing between the number is very wide. So I'm going to click the number, and then I'm going to go to my character window. And then I'm going to bump the tracking down significantly just so the the numbers are squeezed closer together and uh, it looks more appropriate on the back of a jersey so in my case I found that negative 10 
for the tracking works pretty well and I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, while we're in the back, I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool and select this red line. And then I'm going to delete these layers here. And I'll use the eyedropper tool. And hopefully, there we go. And then again, I'm going to do the same thing where I just push this stripe just so it's at the bottom of the jersey and then drag this stripe down so that the distance between these two is the equivalent of the distance between these two on the sleeve. And I think that looks bang on. It's looking pretty good. So with that, the front and the back of the jersey are done. I'm going to go on to the socks next. So I double click them and if I click the base layer, sock color is highlighted and it's going to go and do both at once. So we changed it to navy and then if I click the stripes here, they are grouped. So if I double click them, I've entered I've entered a clipping mask and then if I click the stripe again, you'll see that the group is selected. If I go to the appearance menu, I have a warp arc effect on it. I'm just going to turn it off for the time being so I can use um or I, I can edit the stripes while they're in horizontal view. I double click them to enter the group and then I'm going to make the changes just so they're consistent with the sleeves. I think we had these at 55 pixels. And then this one was, I think, 35. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys and nudge it down. And then this one was seven pixels and then we'll get the spacing just so it's the same as here so I think maybe one or two more looks pretty good now we're just going to change the colors turquoise the tertiary blue the base layer of the sock is navy and then this one will be red we're going to navigate back to the sock and then if I click or sorry if I double click that get the group I'm going to throw the warp effect back on and now it curves around the, the contour of the sock and it gives it some dimension. I'm just going to highlight all three of these, copy them, and I'm going to navigate into the back view of the sock. I'm going to make sure my layers are selected here. I'm just going to delete these, paste the layers I just copied, and then using the smart guide I'm going to drag these over. And because we're in a clipping mask, it's just going to conform to the bounds of the mask. And with that, the socks are done. Next, we're going to go on to the pants. Double click it, enter isolation mode. We'll change the base color of the pants to navy blue. And I'm going to grab the belt here, double click it, change the belt to navy blue. And then I'm going to change the lace color to turquoise. And then we'll change the back color of the pants here to Seattle's red. If I zoom in, we can actually play with these inner tags. So if I double click it and then expand the layer, you can see that we have various uh, brand logos. So we have Bauer, CCM, True, Warrior. Um, for this one, I'm just going to hide the CCM logo and show Bauer. And then for the senior and large text, we can change them to whatever we'd like. So if you want to go like uh, junior and small, you could do that. Uh, if you wanted to do initials, you can do that too. But uh, I'm just going to leave them as is because they, they look pretty good. Now get out of the pants. Um, let's see. Next up, we'll do the side stripes here. Now, on the pants that Seattle wears for their uniform, they don't actually have stri side striping, nor do they have a logo here. Just to show what we can do with this template, I'm going to add both. So if I double click the side stripes, we're again in a clipping mask, so it's only going to be affected within the bounds of the mask. I'm going to change this first stripe color to turquoise, and then the second one back here is going to be their tertiary blue. And that way it's kind of consistent with what's going on with the socks and the sleeves, and uh, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to do the logo here next. Uh, if I double click it, again, entering a clipping mask, I'm just going to go and grab the Seattle primary logo. And then I'm going to delete this logo, paste the Kraken logo, 
scale it down and place it. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a drop shadow again. Uh, because this one's small, I'm gonna go back to one pixel for the Y offset and half a pixel for the blur. And that looks, hang on. Yeah, it looks good. It looks like it's, it's embroidered or embossed onto the pants, which uh, I just think elevates the look. Next, we'll go over to this logo expand the drop down menu and I'm going to hide the CCM logo and we're going to show the Bauer logo. I'm going to select it and change it to turquoise. With that, I think the pants look pretty good. Um, maybe for the belt color actually, we'll change it to red just so we have that, that subtle red accent just to tie, to tie in the rest of the look. Uh, next we'll go into the helmet. So I'm going to double click the helmet, zoom in, I'm going to change the base color to navy blue, and then I'm going to double click this uh, the earpiece, and it's got a translucent look to it so you can kind of see what's going on behind it. I'm going to change that color again to navy blue, and then uh, for the visor we can change the tint if you'd like, you just have to double click it, and uh, most of the times I just leave it white by default, but uh, for this we'll change it to turquoise. And again, it's going to give you that glossy shine as well as the translucent, uh, or I guess transparent at this point. So you're going to see everything that's happening behind it. Uh, next we're going to double click this logo, and if you haven't guessed it by now, we're going to enter a clipping mask. Uh, I'm going to grab the Seattle Kraken word mark, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to delete this logo, and paste this logo in place and uh, you can see within this clipping mask it's actually only going to show up on the physical components of the mask so if I place it like right like here it, it shows as if it, it, it's like the base color of the helmet um, it, it could be cool for some some huge side logos on the helmet but uh, for this for this uh, uniform design we're just going to scale it down keep it pretty modest and uh, just place it up at the top here. I think that looks nice. Uh, there's room maybe if you wanted to do a secondary logo or maybe a, a player number here or something, maybe text along here, but uh, for now I'll just leave it like that and you guys can explore more options if you'd like. Uh, next up is the gloves, so I'm going to double click the gloves, enter isolation mode, and I have each of these items grouped together, so if you're doing so the side of the hand, both sides are going to be selected at the same time, so you get to do um, the entire gloves in half the amount of time, just helps speed up the process. I'm going to change them to navy. Seattle has really boring all navy gloves, so I'm gonna start by doing that, but then we're gonna tweak them slightly just to just to explore some options that they may have missed out on. I'm gonna do the cuffs with the turquoise blue, and then the lining, the tertiary blue, and that way it's kind of similar to what's going on with the sleeves, with the, uh, the sleeve numbers. Uh, let's do the palms, the tertiary blue as well. And then if I click here, we'll get some red lining into it. And I'm just going to double click this individual piece and change that to navy. It kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. Uh, I'm just going to zoom in here. And we'll change the text here. We'll do Kraken number 32. Change the color to turquoise. Um, and then I'm going to copy this logo again. I'm going to double click the, this logo here and hide it and paste the giant Kraken logo and scale it down inside the clipping mask. I know no NHL team actually has logos on their gloves, but this is a fun extra. Um, 
just way to add some character personality to the concepts. I think it's kind of fun. I'm gonna add a drop shadow to it. Uh, we'll keep it as is because it's a relatively small logo. It just kind of looks like it's been embroidered directly to the glove. Next, I'm just gonna go to the the cuffs. I'm gonna hide the warrior logo. We're gonna show the Bauer logo. And I'm gonna change the Bauer to navy blue. And we'll do the same thing on this one. Bauer and navy blue. And with that, we are totally done the Seattle uniform. It took just just under just under 25 minutes. So uh, I think that's a, a pretty fast pace to do a, a concept. And uh, I think it turned out quite nice. It looks just like what they wear aside from the, the few modifications we've made. But uh, yeah, with that, we're done. I'm just gonna go ahead here and change the text to Seattle Kraken. And we're done. Voila. I want to take a few seconds here to thank everyone who's helped me out along the way with designing these templates. Um, they've been a lot, but uh, I've had a lot of feedback from some friends um, figuring out a few bugs, what works, what doesn't, some tips, some extra things they'd like to see, all that good stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who's helped me, everyone who's supported me, and everyone who's purchased one. I hope you love it. Uh, I've had a blast making them, so um, yeah. Uh, what else? If you if you guys have made any concepts or if you're really intrigued by them, send me uh, send me your designs on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, my tags are Orion A Taylor, and that's both Instagram and Twitter. It's pretty easy to find me. Uh, I love seeing what you guys come up with. I love. Uh, posting some concepts that uh, you guys have made and uh, sharing the love. So I appreciate everyone checking out this video. I hope you learned a few things and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Till the next time, catch you later. Bye.